Right, good afternoon everybody. Can everybody hear at the back? Yes. Yeah, thank you. Um, my name is John Michael Daly and I am a postgraduate researcher at the Business School. Uh, I've literally just, or I'm just in the process now of putting together my 9R proposal. So I'm very much at the start of the research journey. In fact, you could even say the pre-start of the research journey. I was actually born only a few miles from here and brought up in East Birmingham. One thing I feel very passionate about is contributing to the survival of our British micro business ventures. Having experienced the industry sector through previous recessions, and I want to feel that my research is not purely to gain a qualification and recognition for myself, but also to benefit and prosper the organisations that are involved in my research however small that may be. My proposed research exploring how micro-business can seek empowerment by harnessing social capital through the new digital technologies we now find in our world will highlight the potential for how these micro-businesses in the UK can adapt and move forward but still keep their traditional value. Entering the world of academic research has meant learning a whole new language. The world of the ologies, the epistemologies, the ontologies, the methodologies et al. The approach to delivery is very different from that forthright world of conducting business in translating thoughts and emotions and experiences into academic language. Knowledge versus education. Without devaluing education, and this is only in my personal opinion, I feel knowledge can only be attained by experiencing and immersing in the world that one inhabits. I hope you'll find the next 10 minutes introduction to my proposed research enlightening and give some food for thought. Just for those of you who aren't from the business world, uh, when we use the term micro-business uh, in this country, it was based around the EU's definition that this is a business that actually employs less than 10 people, or 10 employees rather, and has a turnover of less than 2 million euros. In May of 2013, Lord Young, the then Enterprise Advisor to the Prime Minister, produced a keynote report on micro-business in the UK, highlighting the importance to the UK's economic growth and coining the very poignant phrase, the vital 95%. In a nutshell, medium and large companies have great brand value, but very little social value. Micro-business will always struggle to compete with large brands. However, the big USP for micro-business is that intangible state of mind that creates a feel-good factor, a narrative story which creates empathy and sentiment for the seller, a state of social value that opens doors. The term social capital has actually been around since the 19th century, but has only really started to be more widely used since the 1990s. Kenneth Newton in Social Capital and Democracy, back in 90, 1997, considered social capital a subjective phenomenon formed by values and attitudes which influence interactions. So what do companies want us to know? We're so used now on packaging to see all these uh, signs with saturated fat levels and number codes that we've, we've started to become very familiar with. So what if there was another metric to actually demonstrate social value in just one numerical value? Then this social value could actually be displayed via a mobile scannable QR code with a number that represented the social value and heritage as an index. So by creating metrics to demonstrate social value, in one, it would illustrate the product or service to the, co the company had with a very high social value, creates reasons to buy and articulates to the public by, for example, means of social media, which can capture that information. Now the images on the screen, I'm sure you're all very, very familiar now, they've become part of our everyday life. So, if I could just have a show of hands, how many people here now use smartphones 
tablets, when you want to buy something, when you want to look for a company. Now, if I'd asked that same question four years ago, how many people would have put their hand up? <coughs> There's always one or two, isn't there? Um, but just this microcosm here highlights this seismic shift in the way that we behave and interact. As Lord Young there highlighted as well, that the growth of technology is a major key driver. And quite interestingly, uh, last year at the, uh, or, or last, just January, there was actually a statement that there are now more Android phones being registered every day than there are actually babies being born on the planet. So in terms of a research question, how can micro-business become empowered by harnessing this social capital in new digital and mobile technologies? The prime aims of the study, to explore the potential for actually harnessing the intangible capital, social capital of micro-business, by investigating a portal to social capital through digital media. To investigate the advantage of embracing these ventures social capital and traditional specialist skills, services and products and to gain a greater in-depth understanding of the effect on micro-entrepreneurs and micro-businesses in relation to this seismic shift in the way the population and customers conduct business using handheld mobile devices. The initial research will have a pilot study of a small group of micro-entrepreneurs and this will allow testing the methodological approach and methods used. Now this is quite an interesting example. This has actually been widely used in the press over the last month. And this is an example of the use of a QR code along with a descriptive narrative to link to a video on environmental sustainability of print and paper. So the message that this company is bringing across is that we've got high social value and they're getting the user to scan that with their smartphone and immediately take them to a video on, on YouTube or another hosting site. In terms of the approach, the term bricola was actually first coined by the French anthropologist Levi Strauss back in the 1960s. You could say effectively it's a jack of all trades. A qualitative research to describe a pragmatic and eclectic approach to qualitative research, shared by personal history, past knowledge of the people whose worlds one would be investigating. Performing various diverse tasks, this could be interviewing, observing, interpretation, and intense self-reflection and introspection. A bricola challenges the traditional principle that researchers should remain neutral. Although there are schools of thought that you should distance yourself from your participants and remain value neutral in research, I have both empathy and first-hand understanding of the world of the micro-entrepreneur, the world that they inhabit, and I want the research to reflect their voice in how they cope with the problems they face and add value to their world as a result of my proposed research. In the early stages of the research journey, the Bricoleur research approach can create an anchor for work in the field that I will work in, informed by trusting the validity of one's own professional, personal perspective on the important elements of the research environment. One problem in research is gaining access to the actual research demographic. So in the past six months, I've basically been to many shows at the NEC, keynote conferences, and also engaged with local trade publications uh, to raise the profile of my research. So in conclusion, the value of this proposed research and intended outcome. The research is intended to develop a theoretical understanding of social capital, which is capable of building an intangible state of mind that creates a feel-good factor delivered by the medium of social media and driven by mobile technology 
which will facilitate increased social value. Thank you.